Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to replace the text that says read more for your blog post links with whatever text you want it to say instead. We're going to do this with a little bit of clever CSS, and as always, the codes I'm about to share are listed in the description below, but this code is a little bit complicated. So let's hop on into my demo site and I can show you exactly how it works. So here we are in my demo site, and I'm going to hop into edit mode really quickly to show you. If we scroll down here, you'll see my blog posts have the text read more at the very bottom there. Right next to where it says manage posts, you'll see the edit button. If you click on this and scroll down in your blog settings here, you'll be able to show the read more link. Make sure that's selected as show because that way the codes we're about to use are going to work. All righty, I'll select done and let's navigate over to design and then scrolling all the way down to custom CSS. This is where we're gonna paste our code. All right, Squarespace just reloaded my page right there, so we've got our links on the bottom. Now the first thing we're gonna do is hide this underline that's after the word read more. This is a super simple code. It just says blog more link after display none and check it out, the underline is gone. Now the next code we add says blog more link font size zero REM important. What that does is it actually removes the font to size. It makes it zero so it's impossible to see the text for the read more link. We need to add that code because we still want to keep the functionality. We still need the read more link there, but we just don't want that text to show up anymore. So we've added font size zero REM and exclamation point important to make sure the browser prioritizes this code. Now here's the fun one. We're going to use what's known as a pseudo element, the word before, to place new content before that word read more. So this is going to say get the recipe and then have a Unicode arrow. So check it out. Instead of read more, it now says get the recipe. And notice how my cursor is changing. That get the recipe is a functional link. We also had to say font size one REM because if we remove that, it's going to keep this font size of zero that we had from the line before it. So we need to specify, hey, we actually want to give this font a size. Make sure it's at least one REM. You can say uh, 16px if you want to. You can change that to absolutely any font style or sorry, font size you're comfortable with. I prefer one REM for my own codes. Alrighty, now after that, it still looks kind of plain. It's just a little bit of text. So I'd like to show you how to style it so it looks a little bit more like a button. We're going to go ahead and give it a border and a little bit of padding as well. So this padding is 0.5 REM, and that's the space between the text and the edge of that look, that button look that we now have because we gave it a border. Now you can change the color of this border. You can change the size of the border if you want to. Okay, that's gonna be way too big. <laughs> Let's pull that back a little bit. Definitely customize this however you see fit. You can also give it a background color if you want to make it stand out even more. Now what I love to do with buttons to really get that button effect is to actually create a hover effect so the style will change when we hover over it, making it really obvious that it's clickable. So this is a little tricky though, because we're already using the pseudo element before. So to create this hover effect, here's what we have to say with our code. We have to say blog more link hover before, and then I'll open up a bracket and let's go ahead and change the background color and the font color. There we go, now we've made the background color red and the font color a solid white, so when I hover over it, it's really obvious that I'm gonna click on this button that now says get the recipe. And one last thing I wanna show you before we call this tutorial done, you might be wondering why I got rid of that underline. If we remove that very first line of code, you'll see that actually is gonna go through the text that we have, so it's an important step to make sure we say blog more link after display none. So make sure you don't forget that part of the code at the very top right there, otherwise you'll you'll end up with a line through your brand new button and that just doesn't look very fun. So be sure to change up the text here where I wrote get the recipe to anything you want it to be and then adjust the font size as you see fit and feel free to play around with borders, paddings, background color, all that fun stuff. Now this whole code right here is in the description below so you can just copy and paste this into your custom CSS, select save and you'll be good to go. Alrighty, that's it for this tutorial. And again, the code is listed in the description below and it's super customizable. So I wanna encourage you to play around with it, changing up the colors and the text and all the fun stuff to make it match the style that you're going for on your own unique website. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something awesome. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I took all of my pro tips and custom codes specifically for Squarespace and put them into one gigantic PDF. Available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.